Everything is a drum. Hey! And go. What's up, everyone? Adam from FWCI. This is Dave Chappelle, the Dreamer. We had the closer last time. We got the Dreamer this time, and I'm keen for it. I just reacted to Ricky Gervais's new stand-up, and. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was kind of boring. I didn't really enjoy it. And before that, I reacted to... There was one with Bill Burr, but he had a bunch of people on there. That was pretty okay. And then I watched the Burt Kreischer one that had... I thought that was funnier than people gave it credit for, but I see that a lot of people said it wasn't that good, but... I, it, but I agree, it was it was average. So I'm relying on Chappelle to uh, bring it home hard for 2023 and uh, give me some good funny stuff. There's, there's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. And uh, I really want Chappelle to kind of revisit the Chappelle show and do that on Netflix. Do some like scripted, like, you know, pre-edited kind of like comedy sketches and stuff like that. I think that's where he's at his best. With that being said, he's the greatest stand-up comedian of all time, in my personal opinion. So, I feel very, very lucky to be able to watch this. Thank you for checking this out with me. Let's go. This is Dave Chappelle, The Dreamer. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Good work, Henry. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on Dave Chappelle to speak on behalf of people about really serious issues as well i hope it doesn't get too serious i'm i want to stand up that is just ruckus laughter the whole way through oh he's doing it from washington all right this is the same theater he did for what it's worth him i think my girlfriend was sitting in that row pregnant She's now my wife. So it's the killing him softly arena, the building, baby. theater thing. For the show, I had to run out there on the avenue and hand out tickets to anybody who would take them because I couldn't even fill the fucking room. And boy, what a difference. 24 short years makes. Come on, man, if I was walking past, I would have been like, let's go. <laughs> Watch the greatest stand up of all time? Yeah. I got 40 minutes. And the only thing that got me out of that space was a comedian friend of mine, the late, great Norm MacDonald. Shout out to Norm. Yeah, Norm was awesome. Jim Carrey is talented in a way that you can't practice or rehearse. What a God-given talent. Yeah, I agree. He's, he's something else. And it was the first time I could remember since my father died being excited. And the movie was called Man on the Moon. I didn't know any of this. Oh, the Andy Kaufman movie, wow. Yes, and Jim Carrey was so immersed in that role that from the moment he woke up to the time he went to bed at night, he would live his life as Andy Kaufman. I didn't know any of that. I just went there to meet him, and when he walked into the room where we were supposed to meet, I screamed, Jim Carrey! And everyone said, no! <laughs> and then he came over and he was acting weird. I didn't know he was acting like Andy Kaufman. Just like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, hello! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> this is so funny. Challenging process as ever. Very lucky to have seen that. But as it was happening, <laughs> I was very disappointed. Because I wanted to meet Jim Carrey, and I had to pretend this was Andy Kaufman all afternoon. I could look at him and I could see he was Jim Carrey. Anyway, I say all that to say Is that that's how true? trans people make me feel. Oh, Dave. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, all right, he's off. He's off. Yes, you. Yes, you, you little scamp. Thinking that I'm going to make fun of those people again. <laughs> You've come to the wrong show. Really? I'm not fucking with those people anymore. <laughs> Maybe three or four times a night, but that is it. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God. Yeah, the closer, yeah, that kicked off, didn't it? You know what I'm gonna do tonight? Tonight, I'm doing all handicap jokes. <laughs> oh God, that's what Ricky did. Well, they're not as organized as the gays. <laughs> and I love punching down. <laughs> 
There's probably a handicap in the back right now because that's where they usually make them sit. <laughs> I came here to laugh at transgender people. <laughs> I didn't know this was gonna make jokes about us. Let's get the fuck up out of here. Oh, Dave! 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 Oh, no! Oh, no! Yeah, it's about time somebody let these handicaps have it. <laughs> let their match tonight. Fuck them. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Oh. Madison Cawthorn, that's his name. He's no longer a congressman. I don't know if you follow politics. Uh, I'm not trying to be funny, but <laughs> he lost his seat. <laughs> he ran a bad race. <clears throat> oh, buddy. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the handicaps are the new people I punched down on. <laughs> Just a heads up, everybody, YouTube has been real funny about certain words, so if there's a bit that you're looking for in here and it's cut out completely, it's because certain words are used way too much, but I'll try and keep in what I can. If you ever meet a white person named Huckleberry, he has less money than you. If I was in court and my lawyer came up and was like, I am your attorney, Huckleberry Finn, I'd be like, uh-oh, I'm going to jail. Because as soon as the judge sends me, I'll be like, Your Honor, before you sends me, I just went to court to know. I identify as a woman. <laughs> Send me to woman's jail. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's talk about it, Dave. Get in there, you know what I'm be doing. Give me a fruit cocktail, bitch, before I knock your motherfucking teeth out. <laughs> I'm a girl just like you, bitch. <laughs> Come over here and suck this girl dick I got. Don't make me explain myself. I'm a girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm what's known as a, as a lazy comedian. Call me lazy because I do shows sometimes, 20,000 people be in the crowd. And, and I'll tell a joke, and, and they'll all look at me like I'm crazy. But three or four people will laugh really hard. <laughs> and I'll be on stage like, yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> well, this next joke is one of those jokes that... <laughs> oh, God. Am I going to be one of the three or four? But I'm going to do it. You know what I don't do good? I'm not good at impressions, but this is an impression. You ready? <laughs> I, love what, I love what he does impressions. This is not going to work. <laughs> it's my impression of the dead people on the Titanic. Oh. He didn't let me finish. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's my impression of the dead people on the Titanic as the submersible was approaching their ship. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Girl, join us in our watery grave. <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's the wake up. That part is what got me. 20 years from now, on my 70th birthday, I'm going to take a submersible to see the submersible. <laughs> well, I frequent strip clubs. I don't want, you know, it's something I like to do. And, uh, and my wife said I was creepy because I go to strip clubs by myself. Is that, is that creepy? You know what? I don't go to strip clubs, but that sounds better than going with a bunch of dudes. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. That's creepy to me. Yeah. Hey, y'all, let's all go to the strip club. And, and get our dicks hard together as a group of friends. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Drive it's home in a weird. quiet car and not talk about any of the things we've seen or done. <laughs> no, I go by myself. But it's more about being out. I like the music. That's not right there. A few naked chicks in there it just makes you feel good. But I'm not trying to like socialize or meet anybody. You know, sometimes I go to a strip club and, and I bring a book. <laughs> and I sit right by the stage because the reading like is better. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, this is killing me. Oh, fuck. The stripper, for some reason, told me her real name. Whoa! It's a big move. Well, so I left. <laughs> Good night, Deborah. 
you know, all last year, uh, I, was, I was touring with arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest living comedian, uh, Chris Rock. Me and him toured all year last year. Oh, no. You gonna talk about Will? And right before that tour started, uh, Chris was involved in what we blacks might even consider a, a, a goddamn 9-11. <laughs> Chris got slapped in the face at the Oscars <laughs> by Will Smith, which was one of the craziest things I'd ever seen. <laughs> it was. And I thought it was fake. I wasn't, I, I didn't know. So I, I asked him, I go, I go, well, you know, he said, what? I said, well, did it hurt? <laughs> he said, yes. The real offensive part was that after they slapped him, Will just, just sat down and enjoyed the rest of his evening. It was yeah. crazy. It was <laughs> Oh, go in, go in hard, Dave. And I toured them all year, but the night he taped a special, Chris was one of these guys that's crafty. You never know what he's gonna say until he really says it. So I went to see him tape a special. He taped it right up the street. I reacted Baltimore. to this as well, it was nuts. You got Called her a bitch, it was great. No. Baltimore is so desperate. Tupac and his mother moved from Baltimore to Oakland for a better life. <laughs> said, I refuse to be a victim. The crowd said, oh. And I was backstage looking like, watch the tape. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? You talk shit to Chris, Chris Rock now? <laughs> Everything's funny until it happens to you. Yeah, it nearly happened to Chappelle, didn't it? A mere three months after that <laughs> terrible attack that Chris yes. Rock endured. Oh my God, I'm, I'm being attacked. <laughs> and this motherfucker was ragged. He jumped at me, he was like, ah! <laughs> In that moment, it occurred to me that bodyguards should not wear dress shoes to work, Travis! <laughs> Yeah, Travis. And I started to chase him and I said, ah, fuck him. <laughs> I picked the microphone up. So I'm gonna finish this show now. For three months before that, I'd been making fun of Chris Rock. You <laughs> would ask me all the time. Well, I don't know what I would have done, but I do know now what Will Smith would not have done. And that is enjoy the rest of his evening. <laughs> Oh, dude, that would have been amazing. Imagine Chappelle just needling him for the rest of the night. I had to watch the tape afterwards to know this happened, but, but as soon as he tackled me, Jamie Foxx was the first motherfucker that jumped out of the crowd. He was wearing a white cowboy hat like he knew this shit was going to happen right. to him. <laughs> He sees the emergency exit. He starts running for the emergency exit just before he got to the door. Puff Daddy from Bad Boy Records. Jumped in front of the Has he got something to say about Diddy and all that stuff that was going on? And I know Chris is backstage looking like, nobody helped me. <laughs> Your attacker was nominated for Best Actor, wasn't he? This has been awesome so far. This has been so funny. Way, way better than his last ones. Yes. If they had shot and killed this kid on stage at the Hollywood Bowl, like I pay you to do, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't a gun. A knife blade popped out of the front. I guess this kid was going to stab me. And someone in the audience screamed out, Dave, what happened with the attack? And I didn't know there was a journalist in the room. Oh, no, Dave, what did you say? <laughs> a knife that identified as a gun. <laughs> I got six more weeks of bad press for that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear about that one. That was the headline in the article that said, Dave Chappelle's alleged attacker is bisexual. I said, alleged attacker? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Could definitely attack me. I'll show you the tape. Yeah. He's allegedly bisexual. We haven't seen the tape of that? I'm gonna need to see him suck somebody's dick before I believe the rest of it. <laughs> 
if you had died tonight, me and the kids would have nothing. Uh, I ain't getting 50 mil for doing the Chappelle show. <laughs> Those are the keys to my safe deposit box. God forbid anything ever happened to me. But if it does, don't even worry about it. <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> Do you know this bitch looked in the box while I'm alive and well? <laughs> and then she was mad at me. She said, God damn it, David, I opened that box. I said, you did. She said, yes, I did. And there was nothing in there. <laughs> Placebo box, it's fine. She said nothing except your stupid joke book. I said, whoosh. <laughs> said, well, sweetie, look. If you tell those jokes exactly how they're written. You want to kiss you. <laughs> they're really good jokes. What is this shit? Come join me in my watery grave. No, you got to roll your throat. <laughs> join me in my watery grave. Yeah, let me tell you something. One time I thought my wife was cheating on me. I waited for her to fall asleep. And when I waited a long time, she's Asian. I couldn't tell if she was asleep or not. I was looking at her. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I couldn't figure out the password. Then I remembered it's iPhone. This shit has facial recognition. I was just like, oh. <laughs> And that shit opened right up. <laughs> Come on. Oh my God, this is absolutely brutal this time. This fella sure does spell girl with a U a lot. <laughs> and I switched over and looked at his pictures and I couldn't believe it. This fella looked gay and still pictures. His mouth was open in every shot. <laughs> I'm sorry, just, just, go, just go back to sleep. I am sorry, I just, I guess I just been insecure because all this cheating I've been doing. Good night. <laughs> I was gonna say, Mr. Strip Club talking about I'm a jealous husband. She said, who is this bitch in this picture? I said, how'd you open that phone? She said, it was easy. All I had to do was mash my nose and go like this. <laughs> oh, girl, relax, that ain't no bitch. This is my friend, Deborah. <laughs> it's a government name, it's fine. HBO gave me the biggest opportunity of my life at that time. And I shot it in San Francisco at a place called Broadway Studio. I've probably seen it. I've gone down rabbit holes of his stand up on YouTube many, many times. So when I got off stage, I ran down the steps to the alley behind Broadway Studios. I was nobody in show business, just a guy that believed in us. I said, man, guess you fucked everything up. He said, we made a deal with that nightclub to not play music, and they didn't honor the deal. I didn't know anything about the streets at this age. But I found out later in my life that these men were, were Russian mobsters. Oh, God. And I don't know what you guys know about the Russian mob, but these are the niggas that just what? But Chrysler tells me. But your friends never paid me. And when he said that, I realized I was locked in a kitchen. <laughs> That's not good. It's a funny thing if you believe you're absolutely right. You can get drunk off the feeling of how right you are. That's why gay people are so mean. <laughs> Where did that come from? Was that a stray? Jesus. But I do see where this is going, though. And he walked over to me, and he, he gently placed his hand on my cheek, which I got to tell you is a very emasculating thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it would. In any given moment, the strongest dream in that moment wins that moment. I am a very powerful dreamer. Yeah, I'm not lying. Okay, yeah, that's a... Interesting concept, tell me more. And I am living it as a 50-year-old man. My dreams are very strong. Dreams, determination, will, I get it.
But I look across the nightclub and I'll see some guy that no one's ever heard of. And he got six bitches at his table because he got so much liquor and they all <laughs> call him saying, go Cena, go Cena. And I'll be looking across the room like, oh my God, I'm in that guy's dream. I can hear him. Yeah. Yeah. Bottle service. I seen Dave Chappelle cross the club looking at me like, ooh, who is that? <laughs> you have to be wise enough to know when you were living in your dream. And you have to be humble enough to accept when you're in someone else's. Yes, I agree with that completely. Will Smith and Chris Rock. Because you guys look at them as big ideas, but I look at them as fellow dreamers. Oh yeah, whose dream was that night though, Dave? <laughs> I am Will Smith. I am the man that cannot take it anymore. I am the man that can get slapped in front of the whole world and keep my composure. This is actually really, really poetic, yeah. man. And men test boundaries. And no man tests more boundaries than a trans man. <laughs> I was waiting for us to get back to this. As soon as he started talking about, like, this is my dream and you have to understand when you're living in other people's dream, I was like, all right. When are we getting back to that topic? Little Nas X. What did Little Nas X do? But the minute he walked in that party, I knew I was in his dream. <laughs> he was dressed like C-3PO. He was shining. <laughs> I didn't know who he was. And for some reason, out of all them dreamers, he walked right up to me. <laughs> I tried to get you in my video. What video? And he just looked at me like, you know what video, and walked away. <laughs> oh, God. All right, little Nas X. I don't know who the hell you are either. And Timmy acted like he had an idea. He'd stand up, he'd say, I want to be a fireman. Timmy said he wanted to be a fireman because deep down, Timmy's attracted to fire. <laughs> and then they die in the fire. Isn't that a tragedy? Yeah. Timmy ends up spending the rest of his life in jail. Dream deferred. Burp, burp. <laughs> yeah, no matter what your dream is, something can always stand in the way of it. He even does extracurricular activities like show choir just to make his resume look good. He's on track to be president. When he's 16, he gets his girlfriend pregnant and has to drop out of high school to make ends meet. But lucky for him, the local Walmart's hiring. Uh, does Billy die in this story? I could even be a regional manager and have as many as three Walmarts under my control. No thanks. <laughs> Yikes, that dream had a very dark end. And it can't put a lot of that stuff on YouTube. It gets monetized issues from it. I know, it sucks. Things didn't go well for Billy. Let's just end it there. What do you want to be when you grow up, little Nas X? I want to do a music video and slide down a stripper pole all the way to the depths of hell and suck the devil's dick at 10 o'clock on BET. What? <laughs> what is he talking about? Shockingly, that was the only dream that worked out. What video is that? Because I wanted to tell you all that they came true. And I wanted to thank you all. Nice, inspiring words to end this on, I think. I realize that my God, man, this is not my dream at all. It's yours. And I am honored wow. to be in it. What a beautiful thing to say as well. I love how humble he was during this performance, for real. Yeah, killing him softly. What's the first joke you think of when you see killing him softly? Oh my God, it's Jim Carrey. <laughs> Bob Sagan as well. Man, we lost some people this, what, this past 12 months, 24 months. God, Hulk Hogan's on there? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who think uses the N-word more, Hulk Hogan or Dave Chappelle? <laughs> I really enjoyed that uh, stand-up set. I mean, he came in hard at the beginning and it was, it was kind of like sarcastic, but like aggressively offensive humor 
based on what happened with the last stand-up special with um, The Closer. And it was all very sarcastic. I mean, obviously he's not, <laughs> he doesn't have a problem with people with disability, but it's amazing how funny the start of that was and just how well Dave Chappelle can take that kind of subject matter and just make it funny. Like it, that's, that's a talent that doesn't grow on trees, you know? I really like the long story at the end talking about how, you know, are you living in somebody else's dream and sometimes you need to understand that. And that's something I've always been kind of like, uh, kind of conscious of. Like sometimes you need to step back and let somebody else take charge of a situation and be their support and vice versa and stuff like that. So I totally get that you're not always the center of attention and I, I definitely uh, picked up on the undertones of what he was talking about throughout that whole story there at the end. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this reaction. It was a lot of fun. It's definitely, I think, Chappelle's best Netflix stand-up special, to be completely honest. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments. For what it's worth, is still my favorite. I, I mean, just every single joke on that leaves me in absolute stitches. So I want to hear what your favorites are. Appreciate you checking out this video. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends. See you in the next video. Peace.